Hello and welcome to this video in which I will be showing you how I painted the Death Guard Marine. As usual I started off using a primer of Chaos Black through a rattle can, but you can use any primer you prefer, um, obviously. Then using light rust I applied a coat to the entire model. I did this through an airbrush, but if you don't own an airbrush you can use a regular brush just as fine. Once that coats dry, I use chipping media and I coated the entire model with it. Again, I did this through an airbrush, but you can just use a regular brush if you don't own an airbrush. Um, roughly 15 minutes after applying it, the chipping medium is dry. It will look really shiny, but that's no problem. I then coated the entire model using black. If you're going to do this with a regular brush, uh, make sure you use um, thin coats because we don't want the uh, paint to be too thick later on. As you can also see, I left some of the rust showing, uh, which is not going to be a problem. It will enhance the effect later on. Next, I moved on to yellow olive and I painted the entire model with this color. Again, I did this in a thin coat. And again, you can use a regular brush if you prefer to. And with this layer again, it's not a big deal if you leave a little bit of the light rust visible. I then moved on to camouflage green and I applied the zenithal highlight to the entire model. In this stage, if you don't have an airbrush at hand, um, you can dry brush this uh, color on. Um, just use the same um, method as I am doing in the video and apply this in a top down manner on most of the more visible to the light areas. Once that's dry, I move on to using water and I coat the entire model uh, with a thorough amount of water. This activates the chipping medium underneath and will make chipping um, easily doable. And I chipped the model using a hard brush. Um, you can also use a toothpick if you want to. Or if you really um, want to make big scratches, you can do this with a fingernail as well. So once the model is dry, uh, I move on to the metal parts and I use metallic black and I just simply block in all the metal parts. This is pretty time consuming, so take your time with it. And make sure to not hit the green parts, obviously. When all the parts are blocked in with the uh, black metal, I use non-oil and I wash all the metallic parts. And again, uh, try to avoid hitting the green parts. If you just go over it a little bit, it's not going to be a big deal. It will make a nice shade effect. Now at this stage, we don't need to be super neat or super clean. Next. I use gunmetal and I highlight all the metallic parts. On the finer lines I do this by just painting on lines and you can leave little bits of the previous layers visible. It will appear more like a dent than a scratch. On the larger areas I will just dry brush the, the model. Whilst dry brushing I stay away from the deepest recesses. After this I move on to silver and I repeat the process. I go, uh, go at it in the same way as the previous layer, I dry brushing the larger areas and just carefully painting in with the smaller areas. Mm -hmm. 
and here again you see me do this in a more dotting way so that there's a nice contrast between the light and the dark effects it will enhance the um, the feel of it being more damaged and weathered down Next I use anthracite grey and I paint in the black areas. Now I only had some black areas on the on the plasma gun on his back. So I carefully painted these parts in. And then using non oil I wash these areas. Once the non oil has dried, I go back to anthracite grey and I apply an edge highlight of this. This can be a pretty thick edge highlight because this will be followed by a next edge highlight, which will be a bit thinner. Next, I make a mixture of one part anthracite grey and one part white and I apply a next edge highlight as I previously explained and I do this in a bit thinner manner than the first one and then using AK Interactive, AK Interactive Rust Streaks and some white spirit I make a mixture and this wash will be put all over the model and this will give a real rusted and worn and torn effect to the model as you can see right now it takes around 24 hours to dry um, you can speed the process up using a hair dryer or uh, any method like a, a fan or something like that I move back to the camouflage green and I apply this uh, as an edge highlight all over the model. I make sure to also edge highlight all the damaged and worn areas on the bottom side of, the, of those parts. Next it was time to paint the skin tones on the model and I uh, start off by using tan and use this as more like a base color so that the next layers will nicely grab onto. For the next layer, I made a highlight of, or, or I made a mixture of two parts tan and four parts elf skin tone and I paint over most of the tan um, just leaving the tan visible in the most deep recesses that are, uh, that are visible making the skin color nice and bright and creating a good contrast against a much darker background and then I moved on to Reichland Flesh Shade and I wash all those skin tones. And as you can see, I'm quite liberal with it. We're gonna highlight the skin later on anyway. Next using Antonian Camo Shade, I shade the areas around the pustules on the skin. And then I use Trucci Violet and I do the same thing but in a slightly smaller area so that you keep seeing a little bit of the Camo Shade 
and the Ruchi Violet is more closer towards the pustule. Then using Carober Crimson in a thinned down manner and I thin it down using Airburst Thinner, I'm gonna wash over all the skin again. This will make the skin appear more lively. And once that's dry, as you can see, the effects we painted in earlier are still in place and this is really really thin then i made a mixture of one part 10 and four parts elf skin tone and i applied this as a first highlight to all the skin tones to all the skin parts i do this by just putting on a little bit of paint and dragging it towards the outside of the model For the next highlight I add two parts white to this mixture and more towards the edges I highlighted it all again. Then I use that flesh and I paint in all the pustules with it. I also make sure to look for the pustules on the armor and the weapon. I forgot a couple but I painted them in later on. Then using brassy brass I went and painted in all the more copper like and bronze like parts on the model. And then I went on to use Nihilic Oxide and I washed over with this um, product uh, all the bronze parts. It's best to use this whilst you thin it down just a little bit because uh, this has the tendency to crack if you apply too much in one place. So usually I'll just um, dip my brush in water and not completely wipe it off and then pick up a little bit of the oxide and put it on there and then make a mixture of two parts brassy brass and one part gun metal and I apply this as a first highlight and you can be pretty rough with this um, just make sure you leave the oxide visible in the recesses and on other places where you want it to be visible clearly I then go and add two parts bright bronze and one part gun metal to this previous mixture and I reinforce the previous layer just by building up the color a bit. It will um, brighten up a bit with this layer but also the metal, the gun metal in the, in the paint will make sure it's not going to be too bright, it will 
keep the color dull down. I didn't want to have super bright colors on this, uh, well, dirty looking model, except for the skin tone. And for the final highlight, I went with a mixture of two parts bright bronze and one part gunmetal. And again, I just reinforced this previous layer. And giving it a little bit more shine. But also, I kept in mind I wanted to keep it. I didn't want to make him too shiny. And the bright light I'm using makes it appear really shiny, but it's in reality it's not that shiny. And then using charred brown, I went and painted in all the bone parts and the teeth. I then made a mixture of one part chart brown and one part earth and I apply a rough highlight to all these areas. And just leave, make sure I leave a little bit of the chart brown visible and I paint most of the areas over with this color. I stay away from the deepest recesses and just spread the paint out towards the more lighted area. Next, I repeated this process using uh, pure earth, just reinforcing that highlight. Again, going towards the light, making sure the previous layers stay visible a little bit. So, for the next stage, I used Agrox Earthshade and I washed the teeth. As you will see shortly. And I didn't apply the Argrax Earthshade to the bone parts on the head and the shoulder. And once the Argrax Earthshade was dry, I used Pure Earth again. And I reinforced the highlight once again. And again, in this case, I try and leave most of the previous layers visible and just have the color transition built up slightly. I then make a mixture of one part earth and one part bone white and I repeat this process but this time I try and stay on the most outer side of the teeth and just build up that transition a little bit more And to finish the teeth off, um, I do the same thing again using pure bone white. And as you can see, painting an even smaller area on the teeth. And just to make the top of the teeth really jump out. So then it was time to continue on the horns and the horny stuff. on the shoulders and I made a mixture of one part earth and one part plague brown and in thin lines I now drag the paint towards the top towards the light to build up this color
And again, I make sure I don't go over deeper parts and don't go over the previous layers too much. For the next highlight, I went for pure plague brown and I just did the same thing again, but uh, on a smaller area, again showing some of the previous layer, building the color up towards the edge, towards the point, towards the light, making it stronger. And in all honesty, I was hoping to be done with uh, with those parts by uh, with this layer, but I felt it wasn't bright enough. So I went for a mixture of one part plague brown and one part white and repeated the process one more time, just painting in the most outer tips of the of the horns. Just making it a bit brighter so that um, they showed a bit better on the model. So by now we're pretty far into the model and it's uh, the final few details left to do. I use khaki and I paint in the maggots on the model and also the ropes um, that I could find on the model. I'm not sure if this were meant to be ropes but I decided to paint them this way. But if you think it should be something different, feel free to paint it in a different manner. Then I moved on to Seraphim Sepia. And quite simply, all I did with this was just wash the maggots. Um, getting that white tone off of them and making sure they contrast a bit towards the background. Then using Agrox Earthshade, I washed the ropes. just to get a shade in place and once that's dry I go back to khaki and I highlight the ropes just hitting the most raised areas so that you get a little bit of a color difference that will work just fine So then it was time to paint the plasma core and I decided to keep it really simple. I made a mixture of two parts blue and two parts bone white and I just blocked the entire area in. Um, I decided to keep this simple for actually um, a simple reason. Um, the gun's on its back and it's not active. So I wanted to have a little bit of a blue effect but not too much. I added four parts dead white to that mixture and I dry brushed over the blue part and then I use some blue tone and I carefully washed it in just letting it run into the recesses and leaving the previous work visible and then I only had the eyes left to paint and um, I carefully painted in a thin white line And I did that in a more horizontal way. And then using black, I painted a more vertical black line in the center of the eye. Um, you can do this the other way around. You can paint it black first and then apply two white dots next to it. Um, I prefer it this way. And that actually finished painting most of the model. I was left with the base. So I used anthracite grey and I just painted the entire base with this color. And as you can see I was uh, careful not to hit the model. Especially around the, the skinny parts, the fleshy parts. And once that has been applied I use stonewall grey and I dry brush over the previous layer on the base quickly. And again, trying not to hit the model, obviously. Mm -hmm. 
So after some varnish, um, what I did already, um, I only felt there was one more thing left to do. And I went back with Nurgle's rod to all the pustules and just applied a little dot of it to all of them. Just to make the model a little bit more sickly. This has a pretty nice shine to it. And that finishes up the model. Um, and this is the end result. So I hope you liked this video. Um, like, share, leave a comment, uh, subscribe, do whatever you want. Um, if you didn't like the video and you're still here, um, big respect for you. But uh, leave me a comment with what you didn't like so I get a chance to improve on that. I'm going to say thank you for watching and hopefully see you next time. Bye bye.